All right, guys, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the golden opportunity on tap for the Seattle Seahawks this Sunday. About 28 hours from this upload, we'll be hosting the Jacksonville Jaguars. And, hey, if you want to start getting rid of some of these coaches, then a loss at home to a Jacksonville Jaguars team that is 3,000 plus miles away from their own stadium with a head coach who makes our head coach look like Vince Lombardi. This this is the opportunity, guys. <laughs> and that's not to say that I'm rooting for the Seahawks to lose and I don't think anyone else should be. I'm not interested in that kind of stuff. I don't think that that's... I don't think that that's how you produce a eventual contender is to just root for the team to suck and lose. <clears throat> but goddamn if this isn't the opportunity to put the cherry on top of the season from hell. More realistically, this is an opportunity to have something to be happy about for a little bit. More realistically, this is probably an opportunity to get a win that is probably going to be the high point for the next month or so because after the bye week, things get very, very difficult with some very good teams that we are probably just going to be outclassed by. So there's a couple of opportunities here. If we win, then, hey, we haven't won in a while. We haven't felt good about this team in a while. By my count, we haven't played a genuinely good game since week one. So it's an opportunity for us to at least kind of feel good about our team for a little bit and <clears throat> um, just <sighs> cheer, have something to just unabashedly cheer about. But... It's also an opportunity to put the nail in the coffin of this whole Seattle Seahawks, Pete Carroll, Russell Wilson, however you want to define this era, losing at home to this terrible, poorly coached, dysfunctional Jacksonville squad would be it. I mean, Jacksonville, they, I said this in the Hawks Nest pregame stream and I'll say it again, they make our team look normal. They make our team look like a healthy organization right now but do you have a ton of confidence that the Seahawks are going to win tomorrow do you I have a decent amount of confidence um looking at this Jaguars team they do have some things going on on their offense I will give them some credit there Trevor Lawrence is playing well I think Trevor Lawrence is going to be a wonderful pro I believe that Trevor Lawrence will be a great quarterback at some point in the NFL uh, James Robinson's playing really well for them as well, doing a lot of work out of the backfield. <clears throat> they got Marvin Jones at receiver. They they don't have DJ Chark, which is actually a significant deal. DJ Chark was definitely a dude who could have torn us up the way it seems like all these good receivers are tearing us up. So there's definitely some talent on the offensive side of the ball for Jacksonville, and if our defense plays well again, I will give them some credit for that because this defense has played better the last couple games <clears throat> and I I have kind of thrown some water on that by saying that look at who we're playing. Playing the Steelers, playing the Saints. And I would still throw some water on it, but this is not a bottom three offense in Jacksonville, I don't think. They have talent. They have some ability. They're showing some signs of life. They're doing some things right. So if this defense brings it for a third straight game, win or lose, then I'll begrudgingly give the the, the crew, Dunlap, Wagner, Adams, throw Norton and Carroll in there, I guess. I'll give them their due because I'm seeing the articles from ESPN. Uh, flailing Seahawks are starting to turn it around on defense, which... I, I want to drop kick these article writers in the throat sometimes. This defense is not turning it around yet. They just got two very soft opponents in a row. They still gave up 450 plus yards in four straight games before that. But if they strung another good performance together out there, then uh, credit where credit is due. 
it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world. It's not a good Jacksonville offense, but it's coming along. It has some playmakers. It's doing some things well. And I I want to see it. I want to see Daryl Taylor get back out there and make some plays. I, I want to see uh, Trey Brown make some plays. These guys who are going to be here for a while, one way or the other, I want to see them go out there and make some plays for us. So... Uh, Jamal Adams, too, for the same reason. Whether we like it or not, he is going to be here for at least a little longer. So the the main thing for me in this game is our defense versus their offense. If the defense is even half as real as some people would want to believe that it is after two decent games, they should be able to make enough plays against Jacksonville to get the ball to the offense, and that's where the real impetus of this game kicks in. So people are really down on Gino right now, and I understand why Gino was terrible against the Saints. He was. <clears throat> I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. There are some caveats in there, but uh, you don't need him. He sucked. So badly he sucked that people were talking about going to get somebody else this week. Cam Newton, Gardner Minshew, or just starting Jake Luton. But Gino Smith was playing a good defense in bad conditions on Monday night. This week against Jacksonville, he's playing a Jaguars defense that is going to make life a lot easier on him. Uh, you're not going to see the same level of pass rush that you did. Even if Dwayne Brown and Damian Lewis are out, I don't think you will. They don't really have anybody who's a stud in terms of getting to the quarterback on that defense right now. Now, we might make a couple of them look better than they are, but there should still be more opportunities for Geno to make plays down the field compared to that Saints game where he had, like, one. <laughs> um, I, I do think we're going to have our um, now our main, main running back in Alex Collins, and he should find sledding much easier against Jacksonville than uh, he did against New Orleans, especially if Devion Hamilton can't play. So <clears throat> I, I think that Geno's going to play well. I think you're going to see the... Uh, Rams version of Geno and maybe even the Pittsburgh version of Geno where he played okay. I think you're going to see a little bit more of that than you are of the New Orleans Geno. And they they might not have a Tyson Campbell at corner. So you've got Shaquille Griffin, who we know very well as being a decent player, but not a great player, going up against DK Metcalf. And there should be some opportunities there to get open, make some plays. I hope that after last week's debacle against New Orleans, the offense comes with something a little more varied and intricate than just running the ball up the middle over and over again into a brick wall. And if they do, well, I mean, running the ball up the middle against Jacksonville would be a little more fruitful, but even if, even, even with that, I would hope that you come with something a little more intricate and detailed in your game plan and you're getting the ball to Metcalf, getting the ball to Everett. Letting Geno Smith spread it out and try to pick a defense apart little chunks at a time. That seems to be the best version of Geno Smith to me. I don't think the version of Geno Smith where he just hands the ball off over and over again and then occasionally drops back to chuck it deep. That That's the Russell Wilson stuff. That's how we used Wilson. Geno plays a different game, got to use them in a different way. But I think the offense is going to find some success against this Jacksonville offense. And that's really all I can say for this game. It's a great opportunity to go out there and get a win. And like I said, in a few weeks, you're probably going to be looking back at this Jacksonville game as one of the high points of the season. You're going to be missing the days when you got to clap a little bit and and be a little bit happy that you beat a team, even if it's a terrible team, even if your game was not necessarily the most impressive. Because when Green Bay and Arizona are done with us, beating a team like Jacksonville is going to seem like um, Valhalla in comparison. That's uh, how I'm reading things right now. But make no mistake, despite all these things that I'm saying, despite all the things I have said about this organization, I want to win. I want to win. I do. Um, I think we will win. I, I, I think we could win by double digits. I think this could be a 10-point win. I I know Jacksonville's playing a little bit better, but the problems with that team still exist. There are a metric ton of them. The players openly 
have no respect and no regard for Urban Meyer. Say whatever you will about what's going on with the Seahawks team. The players have not tossed Pete Carroll out onto the garbage yet. The players are playing hard. You would not have seen overtime two weeks ago. You would not have seen a game come down to the final three minutes against New Orleans the way that it did if the team wasn't trying. The team is giving effort. The team is trying to make something better happen. They they just can't because they're in some cases there's a lack of talent. In some cases there's a lack of intelligence. Whatever it may be, they can't win. But this team is not quitting. <clears throat> if this team was quitting, they'd be getting blown out. If this team was quitting, they would have played the whole game, the last two games, the way they did in the first half against Pittsburgh. It's just not a very good team right now, and they're missing their catalyst. So if this team had quit, then of course I would probably pick Jacksonville to win because a team that's quit isn't going to beat anybody. But whatever negative I can say about the Seahawks team, they're not quitting. They haven't quit, and at this point I don't think that they will. So... Yeah, that, that's really all I can say about this one, guys. Um, it's not the most interesting or exciting game, but let, let's, like I said last week, let's keep an eye on the kids. Let's keep an eye on the young guys. Let's keep an eye on the people who are going to be here for the future. Daryl Taylor, Damian Lewis, Trey Brown, the crew, the guys who have a chance to be part of something special later. And... Hopefully we'll be watching a win on top of it. So I'll talk to you guys later on today. Peace out, go Hawks. I will be streaming the Huskies game later tonight, so keep an eye out for that. But uh, for now, I'm out. See you guys later. Go Hawks.